Simon Woodhouse's trip through France has hit a major problem. His boat Water Lily is still stuck in Rouen, 150 kilometers away from Paris. And with the engine still not fixed, there's the worry that he might not make it to Paris at all to open the boat as a floating kitchen. I think she's having one of her moments. But despite the setback, Simon's experienced the thrills of hunting for wild boar. And he's learned how to skin and prepare the meat. It's been an invaluable lesson, and now he's been invited to cook a top-notch dinner for the owners of this 13th century abbey. The guest list includes difficult-to-please aristocracy, and wild game has been requested for the menu. But first, with Simon's restaurant in Paris due to open in just four weeks, there's an even more pressing problem. If you can imagine trying to set up a restaurant, um, plates, cutlery, so much you need for the kitchen, pots, pans, cooking equipment, serviettes, bread baskets, bin, the, the list is just, so I haven't written one. He's discovered a huge flea market taking place in a nearby village, and for Simon, it's bargain paradise. See, I'm just thinking of desserts in that. Little pot of something, don't know what, stuff sticking out of it. That's a sweet little thing. Tu peux prendre le 5 euros? 5 euros? 5 euros. Bien, merci. Ashtrays, more things to add to my list. Hey, well, I'm imagining white. Um, white plates, white uh, tablecloths, white napkins, that just works, works for me and I, I think I'm going to go that route. 70 euros. It's a hot afternoon, the buying pace is relentless and Simon's about to get a rush of blood to the head. Now that is a champagne bucket. Oh, uh, petit restaurant. Oui. Un petit restaurant Un cuisinier, un petit restaurant. Et je cherche un pour le champagne, avec de glace, oui. Even the stall holder can't quite believe his ears. 40 euros pour le quatre. Oui. Oui. Ça roule. Bien. Amen. Fantastic. Fantastic. Les Américains. I've just seen a matching set of champagne buckets. They look fantastic because they are just the right height. I can pack somewhere down the bottom, shove a load of ice in those with the champagne sticking out the top. Next to the table. But Simon's now got his sights on the bargain of the day. Catalan. What's that? It's 60 pounds, isn't it? 50, 60 quid. That's a really nice set of pans for that much money. A cracking set of pans. Couldn't imagine finding those at that price at home or anywhere. Copper pans tinned on the inside and heavy weight. That's a cracking little trip, I think. Happy that he's been able to source some great deals for his kitchen, he's now on his way to Abu Dhuraini to cook for its aristocratic owners. It's a chance for him to try out his new pans, but above all, it'll put his cooking skills to the test. And again, pressure shots, here we go. Um, these people know what they eat, and um, they've been out shooting venison on my behalf. Again, I don't know what to expect. Just what a place to live, eh? You just want to go and walk in those woods and go find mushrooms and shoot deer and stuff. <laughs> Louis Marie, his wife Beatrice and their children moved here five years ago. It's their ancestral home. They gave up their careers in Paris to take over its renovation. It's going to be an extraordinary place for Simon to cook. The Abbey has one of only three existing medieval refectories left in France. This is just me in my, in my dream state. This is what I came to do. This is standing around a kitchen table with a, a lovely family. A stunningly beautiful place. The family making plum jam because they've just been picking plums. That's what I grew up doing. It's, um, it's out of restaurants. It's out of chefdom. It's just cooking food and it's, um, it's lovely. But Simon has got to get to work as there's lots of ingredients to prepare. He's cooking roast venison, stuffed with pine nuts and basil on a bed of mashed celeriac with a rich elderberry sauce. As well as that, he'll have French beer batter and roasted vegetables. He's got six to cook for, and with dinner guests notoriously late, timing is everything. Basics always go into place. I've got the bones out of the, out of the venison. That's the, the meat off the thigh. I've got the bones roasting away here. 
just with honey, shallots, peppercorns, some of that celeriac leaf. Just get some colour on them, pull the flavour out, caramelise the honey down. That's going to be sauce. Whilst the bones will create the flavour for his stock, he's also going to add port and elderberries to give it an extra kick. The venison haunch will be cooked wrapped around a light pine nut, garlic and basil stuffing. Pine nuts there, got some basil. And then it's bound tightly to enclose the flavours. Simon's pièce de résistance is to prepare an English type batter. He's making it with yeast and local French white beer. Some pine nuts, some parmesan, a couple of types of basil, maybe put some other herbs in as well. This will add texture to the dish and contrast with the soft celeriac. Simon's got to get his timings right because he's also been invited to dine with his guests. It's all good practice for when he opens his boat as a floating restaurant. Well, we say half past seven to eat. Well, by the time we will have a chat and people arrive and the wine's open and then we've had the starter, which is going to take half an hour. And, um, we have to adjust that it's going to be probably eight o'clock before I'm actually serving this. So half past six is a little too early for it to go in the oven. The venison will take 20 minutes, 30 minutes in the oven. Something like that. It's now 20 past six. And whilst the younger members of the family are oblivious to the pressures in the kitchen, final preparations for Simon's big night are being made. The ancestral family cutlery is being laid out, the guests have arrived, and it's becoming evident that some of the diners have little faith in his culinary skills. Uh, Beatrice and Louis-Marie told me that, uh, oh, you know, um, uh, we invited you for... Uh, for uh, a dinner and uh, there is a, uh, an English chef and for me an English chef it's no sense. One of France's premier Chablis producers has also been invited, Jean-Marc Brocard, and he's got plenty for Simon to taste. This is the real McCoy, isn't it? This is fantastic. This hasn't even been labelled yet. This is from an expert who produces this stuff and uh, it's a good this, isn't, this is a happy day. <laughs> so the pressure is most definitely on, and as the guests take their places, the meat and vegetables have been left to roast in the oven. And with the conviviality of the evening underway, Simon's losing track of time. <laughs> The vegetables and the venison are still cooking in the oven and suddenly there's an unmistakable smell of burning. I'm now probably an hour later than I really wanted to be. I have to pull something out of the bag here because it's all going wrong. The vegetables look distinctly crisp, but even worse, has Simon overdone the venison? Simon overdone the meat and the veg and we've been chatting with a drink of chablis, that's the problem. Simon's guests are blissfully unaware of what's going on in the kitchen. How do I ask for a masher? Now it's panic stations. The vegetables are a little overdone, but the venison is perfect, seared and cooked to perfection. Has Simon managed to save the day? And furthermore, will it be enough to win over his sceptical French guests? I hope you've started. Simon! Oh, his guests are being polite but they haven't eaten anything yet. Eat, it's hot, please. <laughs> it's been a bit of a nightmare behind the scenes, but Simon's venison dish seems to be making a big impact round the table. La technique, c'est parfait. La cuisson, tout ce qu'on voudra la structure, c'est parfait. And even the most unconvinced have changed their tune. Today, for me, it's absolutely incredible because it's a kind of harmony with um, 
With Simon, he cook um, as God. Little God, but as God. His guests are full of praise, but Simon's found the pressures of socializing and cooking hard to take. It's made him realize just how tough the prospect of running his own restaurant will be. Um, it's nice to get away with it. I'm grateful they were complimentary, yeah, but no, I'm not happy. You think you can do better? I know I can do better. Mm. Yeah, Next time on The Floating Kitchen, English chef John Burton Race checks up on Simon's progress. Simon's been affected, and I suppose he's so far into it now that he doesn't know how to say enough's enough. And Simon helps out a desperate chef on Bastille Day. Just and cooks for the first time in Water Lily's kitchen.